Alright, welcome back to Pac Manufactured, a series all about Pac Man clones. In this episode, we're taking a look at Fantasy Zone The Maze, released in 1987 and was originally developed by Sega for the arcade and later ported to the Mars system by Whiteboard Company. Now, this is the Mars system version that we're looking at here. So, yeah, this is a little unfair, I think, to call this a straight up Pac Man clone because it does a lot of Fantasy Zone stuff. But the core mechanics are very much Pac Man. So each maze requires you to collect a load of items before you can uh, move on to the next stage. In this, it's not pellets, it's money. Now, the real difference in the gameplay comes in the form of that money. So at the start of each stage, it will tell you what items are available to collect in the stage and how much they cost to use. So if you want to, you know, use the big wings to speed up or sort of like a, a cannon so that you can fire back at the enemies, you will have to pay for those items using the money that you collect in the stage. So that's quite a unique little gimmick and it's very much Fantasy Zone in style, which I really, really like. I think it's quite a unique aspect of this game that makes it stand out amongst Pac-Man clones. It is very much the Fantasy Zone equivalent of Pac-Man. So, yeah, I, like I say, I really like the mechanics. I do feel like it's doing something very unique for a Pac-Man clone. It's just different, and it very much reminds you of Fantasy Zone over Pac-Man, which I think is a win, as obviously this is a Fantasy Zone branded game. So, yeah, it makes sense to, to really riff on the Fantasy Zone franchise more than it would be Pac-Man. Like I say, there are mazes, there are items to pick up, and the the core mechanic is very much a case of avoid the enemies whilst collecting all the coins to complete the stage. The maze design itself, not my favourite, I've got to say. There's dead ends, and there's a lot of, like, empty space. Not everything is a corridor. You'll find that, like, there are spaces that are double or even triple width of a corridor, and it's just an open space for you to collect coins in. I don't like that so much. I think that's pretty lazy. I, it's just it's just a space for you to explore where I, I want there to be actual maze designs and with, with, with junctions and corridors for you to explore and make the most of the space. When there's just an empty space there with a load of coins in it, it just makes me feel like, well, we just haven't bothered designing anything. But those are my only real complaints with this. I think the way it plays is just so unique that it really stands out. And I actually really like the fact that it's so heavily a Fantasy Zone game over a Pac-Man game. There's obviously that maze exploration that makes it very Pac-Man-esque. And like I say, collecting all the items before you can clear the stage is very much the formula of a Pac-Man game. But yeah, just the use of, you know, items and power-ups, being able to speed up, being able to shoot back at the enemies really makes this more of a Fantasy Zone experience. And as a result, it's very unique. And I think it really stands out in the pantheon of Pac-Man clones that we've experienced on this channel. So yeah, I think this is a high recommendation for me, to be honest with you. I think this is doing something super original and unique and just mixing up the formula enough to make it feel like something special. So as I said, I think I would recommend this. I think it's a really, really unique game. Uh, a lot of love for the Fantasy Zone franchise. It uses the Fantasy Zone mechanics in a way that makes this a lot more original as far as Pac-Man clones go. So yeah, definitely recommended. Please go and check this one out. 